My name is Wade Gilchrist, and I'm a manager on the AWS certification team. In this video, you're going to learn about AWS exam scoring. Life is really simple, but sometimes we just insist on making it complicated. This is something you may have been thinking when you received your score report on your AWS exam. A 732, what does that mean? Well, it's definitely not as simple as your school days, when if your exam said a 92 at the top, then it meant you got 92% of the possible points. AWS exam scores are a bit more complicated than that, but as you will see, it is for good reason. In this presentation, I'll attempt to clear up some of the confusion and give you a behind the scenes peek into how we create and score your exam and why we do it this way. We'll start by looking at a score report and they'll explain the concept of scaled scoring. And finally, we'll reveal a little secret about our exams that may surprise you. Let's start with the score report. To access your score report, you need to log into your CERT metrics account. And to do that, you can start at aws.training slash certification. That will redirect you to CERT metrics. Once on the CERT metrics site, you want to navigate to the previous exams tab. On the right hand side, you can use the links to download a report. In this example score report, the candidate achieved a score of 836 and was awarded the certification because the passing score is 750. The report also shows that the possible scores can range from 100 to 1000. However, this is a scaled score. So the 836 does not mean that the candidate answered 83.6% of the questions correctly. And this is a very common misconception. To understand what your score really means, you need to understand a little bit about scaled scoring. Scaled scoring is commonly used on many different types of exams, including college readiness and admissions exams, as well as IT certifications. It is generally used whenever there are multiple sets of questions, or what we call forms, for the same exam. And different candidates will actually be shown a different set of questions when completing their exams. While each form is built to the same specifications and validates the same general knowledge, the overall difficulty of the questions can vary slightly. And so we use scaled scoring to provide comparability in reporting across the forms. The same scaled score awarded to different candidates who took different forms represents the same level of knowledge regardless of the number or the difficulty of the questions they answered. What scaled scoring does is try to equalize the scores when one form may be slightly more difficult than another. Here's an example of two forms for the same exam. The raw score represents the total number of questions out of 50 the candidate answered correctly, with each question being awarded one point. The table shows how the raw score translates to the scale score for each of the two forms. A candidate who takes the exam and is presented with the questions on form A needs to answer 32 questions correctly to meet the passing scale score of 750. However, since form B has slightly more difficult questions than form A, the candidate presented with form B only needs to answer 30 questions correctly to receive the same passing score. Because form B is more difficult, it would have been unfair to candidates who saw these more difficult questions unless the raw passing score for them was adjusted. At AWS, the 750 is the passing scale score for all the exams at the professional and specialty levels. Since the knowledge and skills tested on these exams are vastly different, the passing raw scores are different. However, the scale scores are the same. For the associate exams, the passing score is 720, and it is 700 for the foundational exam. Another reason we use scale scoring is to ensure candidate scores are consistent between exams. For example, while the questions are completely different on our current Solutions Architect associate exam than on the 2018 version, the passing score is still 720. However, a new exam version could contain slightly more or less difficult questions, which means the passing raw scores could be different between the versions. So now to let you in on a little secret, unscored items. 
Each exam contains a number of unscored questions that don't count toward your raw score. The unscored items are newly developed questions that are still being evaluated. And because they are new, we don't have enough statistical data to gauge their difficulty. The way we compute the relative difficulty is by the percentage of candidates that answer correctly. And we're gonna need a large sample size to make that determination. And once we have enough data to measure a question's performance, we'll determine if the next steps include promoting the question to scored status for future candidates. It's important to note that as a candidate, you won't know which questions are unscored. We do this to protect the statistical analysis process because if you did know which questions weren't, didn't count, you might skip them and then we wouldn't get our data. Thank you for your interest in our exams and getting certified. I hope this presentation helps to demystify your exam score.